The scanner class is a wonderful class for taking in information from the keyboard. But in this video, I want to show you another use for the scanner class, and that is taking in strings and splitting them up into their various parts. Right here, I have a traditional setup of using the scanner class to take in information from the keyboard. But as I said, in this video, I don't want to look at taking in from the keyboard. I want to look at entering in a string and then splitting it up into its different parts. Let's go up to the top here and create a string. Call it string str equals, and then we'll put two words inside of it. We'll say hello world. When we're creating the scanner object, instead of using system.in, we can pass the string to it as an argument for the scanner constructor. And then instead of calling it from key, because we're not taking it from the keyboard, let's call it from str, meaning from the string that we created up here. Okay, and then we don't need this down here. What we want to do next then is say, what are the words inside of this string? Or what is this string composed of? And so instead of saying the number you entered is, we're going to say the first word in the string is, and instead of num, we'll pull or split out that first word inside of the string from above. And it should be the word hello. So we'll say the name of the object from string dot and then next and when we run the program you'll see that it says the first word is the string hello which is correct and we can do this for multiple words if we say the second word in the string and that'll say hello world but we can run into a problem if we don't know how long our string is so what if i added one more right here and said the third word in the string is well, I get an error, and it's a runtime error, and it gives me no element exception, meaning there's only two words, and there's not another element inside of the string to pull out. So therefore, it gives me that runtime error. An easy way to get around this is to use a while loop and some helpful methods of the scanner class. So I'm going to delete these two lines, and I am going to tell the user what I'm about to print out. And what I'm about to print out are the words inside of the string. So I'll say system.out.println. I'm going to say the words in the string are. And then, as I said earlier, I'm going to use a while loop. So I'll say while from string dot has next. And what that means is it's going to look for any words inside of this string above. And if it doesn't find any more white space or any more words inside of there, it's just going to stop. So this is a Boolean condition saying, does it have a word? If yes, continue the loop. If no, stop the loop. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line that I used earlier, delete the information in it, except for the string. And so it's going to print out from string.next. So it's going to print out the different words inside of the string. So let's go ahead and compile and run it and make sure that it works. And we see no problem. And then it stops after I have pulled out the last word inside of the string. We can use this for different things. It's nice that it can split up a string like this, but there are other advantages of being able to pass this string into the scanner because not only will it look for words, it can also look for numbers. So let's go ahead and try that. So instead of hello world, let's go ahead and put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at the power of what you can do. So the numbers in this string are. So you can tell right here, we're not going to look for has next because these are not strings. What we want to look for are integers. So we can use the method of the Skinner class, has next int. And it's also a Boolean method, and it's looking for integers. Instead of next, we can say next int. And so what it's going to do up here is it's going to pull these out but not pull them out as strings, it's going to pull them out as integers. So let's go ahead and run this and see that it works. And you can see that it's pulling out, but just to prove that those are integers and they have been converted into integers, let's create a sum value and sum them together just to show that you can add them. I'm going to create a value called int sum. And then inside of my loop, I'm going to add the next int to the sum value each time and print it out. So what I'm going to do is create a temp value. I'm going to say int temp equals the next integer inside of the string. And then I'm going to print out that temp value. And I'm going to add the value back to the sum and print out the sum value. 
and I'm going to put a space in between each one just so we can better read the results. So let's go ahead and compile the program, run it. And you can see it's pulling out one and then it sums it because one plus two is three. And so we're actually using numbers. So we have broken this string, converted it into an integer, and we are now using them as integers from this string above. You can also do the same with float, double, byte, short, long, any type of data type. And you could probably guess what the method would be called here. If we were looking for doubles, it would be next double. If we were looking for float, it would be next float. If we were looking for byte, it would be next byte, so on and so forth. Same thing right here. Instead of using next int, you could use next double, next byte, next int. So you can see that the scanner class has a, a very useful constructor that allows it to take in a string and then split that string into separate parts.